All right. It's day two of our session uh, for uh, my uh, weekly challenge breakdown. And uh, we're just going to continue off where we stopped yesterday. So we finished up on how do I come up with the ideas and do my research. And today we're going to cover the topic of the initial setup uh, and planning, which is the topic of our uh, day two session. So I personally have a very strong belief that good documentation is the best possible foundation for the success of your project. Uh, and so these days I spend probably 80% of my time on day two of the build, um, chatting and figuring out the docs and stuff like that. And only maybe 20% codings, quote unquote, right? Um, this process is fairly simple and quick uh, uh and obviously it really depends on the approach that you want to take there's two ways to go about it really um you can go and start with phase one uh which is creating old project documentation uh and then from there uh proceed with the phase two which is creating the project itself and and there are a couple of different approaches for both of those and we're going to explore both of them in this session so on the first side of things, creating old project documentation, there's two ways that I go about it, right? The number one way, the quick way, so to speak, is if you remember the discussion that I had yesterday with AI, I made it do deep research to understand what I'm trying to build, right? Uh, and basically, this chat is now uh, pretty much trained on understanding what, I, what is it that I have on my mind, right? Um, and in that regards, I can reuse this chat and make it build, uh, the documentation that I need. Usually for every project, there are three core types of documents that I wanted to make. So one is the, uh, step-by-step -step implementation plan, uh, the app flow with journey user steps and menus and pages, and then the basic design guidelines. And I usually say that I want them written for a technical product designer so that it really use technical terms while building it, right? And sometimes I also finish it up by telling it to assume a role of an ideal user persona that I wanted to have in order to help me implement this project. Sometimes AI come back, comes back with questions and that is always good because then you can provide clarification. And as you can see, it built the project documentation for me which is pretty detailed, right? We have the first part and the second part here with the app journey. And then the finally, the third part, which are the design guidelines, right? Um, with all the color codes and, and you know, um, where to find them, where to fetch them, what the typography should be like, what are the UI interactions and state feedback, right? So very, very detailed stuff, right? The alternative approach to that is the one that I used initially that I would recommend to people just starting off, and that is using a, a software called Code Guide Dev, right? For you to use Code Guide Dev, you would just need to uh, basically have a base prompt built out first so that it can um, work properly, right? Uh, so in that regards, I asked, again, ChatGPT to build a base prompt right? As a first person thing, right? Um, so um, you can then take this thing basically and then copy it and paste it back into uh, Code Guide Dev. Uh, a lot of times I would uh, ask it to refine this prompt for me as well. And as you can see, refining the these prompts helps it or per se creates the recommendations on the tech stack, core features, the app structure, and provides all the additional context. From there, I just proceed with all the the next steps in which the app itself prompts me to choose the tool. Uh, my usual tool of choice is a uh, lovable. And then from there, uh, it will probably ask me a bunch of questions about the app itself as well. Um, in which I would provide it with more context about the project. Then once you answered 
all the questions. You can click to sort of generate the outline and outline generation would then uh, assist you in producing the project required documents. Now, while the docs are being built, you can initiate phase two, right? Because it's going to take AI a second to build these docs, regardless of whether you are using a chat GPT or, or code guide dev. So in, in that moment is where I would jump into Lovable and uh, start building it. So there's, again, two ways that you can approach phase two. The number one approach approach that I often use is I would just type blank and create a blank project, right? And then upload all the project documentation. But for because I want to do something new, I'm going to try this new approach because there's a, a prompt that I want to test out uh, published by somebody that I'm a part of community with. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, uh, start with saying what I want to build, right? So which, which is something that you can do. Uh, you know, in my case, CMS, user auth, whatever. Uh, and you can, I can use either this prompt or maybe I can go back to code guide dev and, uh, basically go into the, uh, input summary and take that instead. Let's do that. Right. So I'm just going to copy that, go back to lovable. And I provided it with all the information. And then what I'm going to add on top is this prompt that's a little bit funny and crazy looking. And let's see what type of result do we get from there. Right? If you haven't used Lovable before, it's just a, basically an AI coding tool on IDE or better say integrated the development environment uh, tool that anyone who's not technical can use, as you can see, I did not write a single line of code while the tool is already building a code base uh, itself. For the purpose of this video, I'm just going to try and use uh, the chat GPT created docs. So what I've done is like, I would just take this, let's say step-by-step -step implementation plan, as you can see, it goes all the way down to here to app flow. What I would do is I would just take this, copy it, and then paste it into a Google Doc. One of the reasons why I want to do it this way is because uh, of the formatting. If I just take this file the way it's written and put it into GitHub, it will probably not be pro properly formatted. So I would just copy paste it yeah, again into a Google Doc, and then you just go to File, Download, and then choose the this last option, which is Markdown. Right. So what you want to do is you want to build a markdown file. So I'm going to just call it implementation plan. Okay. And then, you know, obviously just save it into your folder. And then once the file is saved as a markdown file, while AI is building the code for my project, I want to just click, go back to Lullable, obviously, then click on this button here called GitHub and just transfer the repository into uh, GitHub so that I can export the code in a way that would allow me to um, be able to upload files in it. We can also go back to Code Guide Dev and again, see the types of documents that you can create. You can basically create all the documentation that I built already 100% inside here. Right. Whenever you got a document that's ready uh, and built, you just click on the download button and save it onto your computer. Now you can see that uh, my initial landing page on Lovable was built and my GitHub project has been connected. So all I got to do is click here and that will move me into the repository for this project. And that is where I'm supposed to start uh, adding in the files that I've created. And so once, since I just downloaded all the files, I would just click to add a file here, right? And then upload files, go and find my folder, click here, and then bring those files to life. So again, we have the app flow design guidelines and the implementation uh, plan files. Uh, you would just click to commit changes.
And then from there, the last step in the setup that you would have to complete is go back to Lovable and then paste the prompt that I will provide you with uh, in the comment section. But as you can see in the prompt, it's pretty straightforward, right? It just tells Lovable that there's an implementation plan, which is the central document for project planning. And then the app flow and the design guidelines docs that it can rely on for additional information. What I want to know from Lovable is whether it understands what the project's about, have any objections and would suggest anything different, uh, and ask me any clarifying questions so that it knows what it needs to build, right? Uh, and obviously, I wanted to talk to it uh, before we proceed to phase one. One way to make Lovable talk to you uh, instead of coding is to switch from this default state to chat only mode. If this is not something that's available to you at this time uh, when launching Lovable originally, just click on the Lovable button here, go to your account settings. And then from your account settings, just click on the account settings again. And then there's this labs part with chat modes. Just click here this, to this toggle to enable it. And then once it's enabled, you can switch between chat and, and default, which is the code mode. And then from that point on, I would just start talking uh, with Lovable and start slowly uh, building. So that ends today's session. Uh, and tomorrow is the first day where we're actually going to get our hands dirty uh, with building the app flows and debugging. See you tomorrow.